People can catch the hunting bug early or later in life, and out of a successful business career that has centered around the stock car track, Fred Wagonhalls and wife Heather have discovered a new passion, a passion for hunting, especially for dangerous game. Their choice of professional hunter, guide, and mentor is one of the best in the world, Jeff Ran of Ran Safaris. And it's through Jeff and an unimagined enthusiasm for Africa that they've begun a hunting odyssey that they'll pursue for many years to come. I was in the uh, NASCAR business, and I was the uh, guy who started merchandising all the t-shirts and hats for NASCAR. And I was very good friends with uh, Dale Earnhardt and Richard Childress. And they always tried to get me to go hunting, and I was always working 24 hours, seven days a week, and never would take time out to do it. He um, has done a lot of things in his life, and uh, but hunting wasn't one of them. And he wanted to to get into it, and he had the ability and the desire to to really start at the top. I've always dreamed of doing this, and my history of being a hunter, I, it'll be three years that this October that I started hunting. When other people have complimented my hunting prowess for, you know, the two and a half years that I have been hunting, I, I, I attribute it to, to Jeff and how much effort he puts into making you a good hunter, not just finding your animal. Hunting, as I've learned in the last three years, is not about going out and shooting any animal. It's harvesting the old bulls that have been driven on the herd. It's thinning out the herd so the herds can grow meeting a lot of great people that care about nature and con you know conserving the animals for the future so i'm really into it to begin the quest for the big five wagon halls and his wife travel to south africa's transvaal region where the goal of their hunt will be to take the six thousand pound white rhino we started with the rhino the white rhino uh, in south africa which is a real success story you know it started uh, Back in the late 1900s, there were very few white rhino left and certainly wasn't a sustainable population and, and couldn't be hunted and were closed for, for many, many years. The white rhino is the only true African rhino, the black rhino having migrated from Europe many, many thousands of years ago. White is actually a mispronunciation of the Afrikaans word for wide, describing the grazing rhino's broad upper lip. At the end of the 19th century, the white rhino was actually believed to be extinct until a small population was discovered in Natal in South Africa. Now, while the black rhino, that 35 years ago numbered more than 65,000, has fallen to less than 3,000, hunting and conservation have raised the number of white rhinos to nearly 12,000, making them the most numerous of all rhinos. The threat of poaching rhinos for their horns, for traditional medicines and decorative dagger handles, remains constant though. Yet while rhino horn can bring thousands of dollars on the black market, a legal rhino hunt will contribute tens of thousands of dollars to a local African community. I really always wanted to see the animals in Africa, but never thought I'd ever be able to hunt them. At that time, I honestly thought that hunting was about killing an animal. I didn't realize it was harvesting an animal, and you're only shooting the old bulls and, that have been driven out of the herd. Too many people, unfortunately, believe what wagon halls used to believe, that hunting's only about killing, without any regard for the future of the animals or the habitat. On the contrary, licensed legitimate hunting, especially in poor nations like many of those in Africa, is the best source of income for conservation. Without hunting dollars, the local people might have little or no incentive to preserve their wildlife or their wildlands. It's also an indisputable fact that the best anti-poaching force is the professional hunters and their clients, who are in the field, ready to spot, report, and sometimes even apprehend poachers. From a purely conservation standpoint, it's the licensed hunter, regulated by the quotas established by the game departments of the countries in which he hunts, who carries out the task of maintaining the necessary population balance among wildlife herds. Old male animals like the rhino bull, the wagon halls, and ran are in pursuit of, are in fact a surplus that needs to be controlled to open up more area and feed for the calves, the females, and the younger bulls that do the bulk of the breeding. Too many old bulls can actually represent a loss to the rhino herds. I'm here to help the circle of life flow. I want to remove an animal who's already passed on his genes and wasting quality food sources that other animals that are strong and have yet to pass on their genes, I, I, I don't want that animal to, to be out there suffering, starving, unable to fend for himself, getting beaten up. I want it to be a quality, well-placed shot so the animal doesn't suffer and that he leaves this planet, you know, as peacefully as he came into it. That's that's my goal, because I just want to be a part of the circle of life and preserve and protect natural resources for others.
The only truly recommended shot in a rhino is broadside into the heart-lung area. With a quartering shot, a hunter's bullet must penetrate both thick armor-like hide and massive leg and shoulder bones. The large horns rhinos carry on their snouts make a frontal brain shot rather problematic in the event of a charge. Only if a rhino drops or swings its head will the brain be clearly exposed. This means the heaviest calibers, such as the 416 Remington Fred carries and the 375 with which Heather backs him up, the strongest solid bullets, must be used on rhino. Hunters could go on green hunts, during which they dart rhinos with tranquilizers so that veterinarians can take blood samples and various measurements to access the health of the animals. Yet what might seem like a peaceful pursuit could, with the unpredictable rhino, turn into anything but, as hunter Alex Campillo learned. A green hunt is one in which we are not intending to kill a rhino. We're going to dart it with uh, the assistance of a game biologist who's going to do some medical things to it. And we take some photos and then we release it. So there was a biologist and there was a cameraman and a PH and myself. It really is a dangerous hunt. You're within 25 yards. It's like bow hunting. You're up close. Now a dart takes about 80 to 10 minutes to have any effect. So you want to shoot it and let it run away. So we tracked it and it laid up for us and we walked in the last uh, four or 500 yards, I would say. The final stock was to within about, I would say 20 to 25 yards away. The biologist kept moving and trying to get a better shot and be close to it. And uh, it detected some, something was going on. I realized that it was truly, truly a dangerous situation, that people could get hurt. He took that step to the side, and then he saw us, and that's when he began his charge and just came. I thought it actually stepped on the biologist. He was practically underneath the rhino. And then I heard the rifle shot. Like a cat falling off a table, it would back up this quick instantaneously before we could even realize it. He was grunting, the hook was going back and forth. He knew something was there and he was just trying to hook anything in front of it. I saw that hook coming back and back, like, just like a blade coming back and forth. He was determined to reach us. It just happened so fast. And with a rifle going off, you just do what you're trained to do and that is hold still. The front of the horn passed me as he was trying to stick the pH. The pH says that he almost placed the barrel on his forehead on the last shot. This animal came to kill us. This is where they stopped him, right here. I tell people now, what I would do differently now is I would go in with my double 470. And at the moment of the shot, I would take the dart gun and I would use the dart gun and then I would pick my 470 back up. They're a dangerous game. They're wild animals. They don't act on a schedule or on a, or on a, uh, you know, on a script. You don't know what's going to happen. This one charged. In South Africa, hunters Fred and Heather Wagonhalls and PH Jeff Ran are about to set off on the tracks of the continent's second largest animal, the white rhino. But even with an animal of such astounding size, shot placement is as critical as it might be on a gazelle. So it's essential before they stalk into the bush after a warm-blooded Sherman tank to make sure their rifles are dead on. Okay, fire in the hole. Two inches left. But that was a good shot. That would be a dead rhino? Oh, yeah. Good. The white rhino isn't one for dense, thick cover that would fit him like a tight jacket, two sizes too small. He prefers more open country. So it's only a matter of time before one of the gray hulks is sighted. Fred, you can see him just on the edge of that hillside. Yeah. He's kind of feeding down. We got the wind blowing in our direction, so. Headed up this way. Look at something this big height. Probably get to about the edge of this grass here. And that's as close as we would get. We just wait for him to stand up, maybe make a noise, a little break a twig or something, and he would stand up. Pretty soon he gets hot enough, he'll move and get into the shade. On a big tree and land in the shade. Sleep most of the day. Start feeding again this afternoon. excited about this. I hope it's the water. I was concerned that if he did wake up with a fright, he may come downhill. They tend to, to move downhill to get away from any kind of danger. So I didn't want to put ourselves in, in danger. And uh, I'd seen what I needed to see, so we, we backed out of there and, and got out of there and carried on the hunt. Yeah, 
because of our position being downhill from him, if that guy would have popped up, I mean, he would have had gravity on his side and we would have been history. We're gonna just keep looking and, and picking up tracks. We drive along like this, we got a tracker on the front and uh, he, he's looking for fresh tracks that are cutting the roads every day. And uh, as long as it's fresh enough, we'll get on it and track them and, and try and get a look at them. While the previous rhino may have been asleep, that's a rare state for these giant creatures. Rhinos must consume vast quantities of grasses to sustain themselves. The need for hundreds of pounds of food, as well as for gallons of water, sends them grazing and roaming for half the day and leading hunters for miles and miles on foot. This time of day, those rhino could be laying down under a tree somewhere. It would be hard to spot. Hunting dangerous game is about opportunity, but sometimes the opportunity is not the one that's expected. Here the grass may be too short to hide a rhino, but not another member of the Big Five. Potentially very dangerous situation. We got in close, you know, before we saw it. If it had been a big male, we would have it would have been an easy shot, but you know, I didn't want to shoot, it was a female. Whew. Had a little incident there with a female. Thought we might have to shoot uh, at least to dissuade her from charging. She growled at us and was switching her tail, and we almost had a confrontation until she popped her head up and then growled at us. I mean, just the floor fell out for me. It was a bit tense for a, for a moment, but it was a good experience, especially for Heather and Fred, having never been in a situation like that and, and what you can do and, and how do you, you protect yourself. Just wait one more second. If she makes one more move, I'm taking her out. Yeah. I'm not waiting. No, exactly. And that's, that's a decision you have to make. But uh, we backed up as far as we could. If we tried to move any further back, you know, you're not in position to shoot. So that was the safest way of doing it. Let's go find another one. <laughs> the African day goes on for hunters Fred and Heather Wagon Halls and PH Jeff Ran. They've just gotten over a close encounter of the lioness kind and are now back on the hunt for white rhino. This is rich game country and great habitat for rhinos. So they soon cut a track and begin following it. And it doesn't take long for the enormous bull to be spotted. You can see his horn sticking out there. You can see his chest if you look in this opening here. Ran has gotten a good look at the bull and knows that it's the kind of trophy white rhino that the wagon halls have come to Africa to hunt. With the evaluation process complete, it's time for the ground game to begin, and a slow, deliberate, deathly silent stalk is undertaken. Get, him, get a shot through the bush. He's going dead away. Take it, Fred. 
hit hard. Come on, let's get up on him. Just need the sticks. Just be ready. I'm sure he's down, but just be ready. You see him down there? Yep. If he even starts to get up, I want you to shoot. Okay. You can see the blood trail here, where he's come through here. You see his spine there? Yeah. Right? Hit, hit him right on the spine. Good shot. All right, he's finished. All right, guys. <laughs> Good job, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh my god, that's so exhilarating. Good job. Good, well done, honey. I'm well, so proud of you, baby. One, one more of the big five. One more. This is unbelievable. The rhino was a tremendous, I mean, thrilled me because he was staring right at me and I was waiting on him to, to turn. It almost mesmerized me and I, it was almost too much time to think. The rhino was pretty exciting because you had these big gaps of time where nothing was happening, but yet everything was happening inside you physically. It was a very exhilarating hunt. Typically in the wild, that's what counts more is the body size and then the horn size, but he could do some damage with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> you imagine that thing going, going through right, you. Yeah, right yeah. through you. That was that's a, great a beautiful mammal. Big old bull, big buddy. You can see on this rhino how, how much, how large that back horn is. Typically, you know, back horn might be worn down like that. Would that be his fighting horn then? Well, they used, you know, they used both of them to fight with. And you can see this bull's actually been in a fight recently. And he's got a mark at the back. And, uh, you know, maybe that other bull we were tracking, these two were sorting out territories and, and this guy ended up winning. So he's probably the bigger rhino. But once his head Whoa, came yeah. up, you could see <laughs> this horn. Came on. I knew that was a big one. That was good. I always just thought, someday I'm gonna to go to Africa. Someday I'm gonna see these animals. And it's just always been in my blood to come see them. And when I got an opportunity not only to come here, but to come and hunt them, it's uh, the thrill of a lifetime. It's so important and people don't realize what hunting does for the community. And it is part of the circle of life. And we're protecting you know, people and family and livestock and our environment and the future. It worked great. It, it, it really did well with each other and I think learned a lot from the experience. I've never had an adrenaline rush like that in my life. Nothing compares to this. You, you cannot describe in words the, the level of reward that you feel in your chest and I'm just so tickled that, that we're gonna get to come back and do this all again.